Hi, and welcome to Live Lessons. I'm so glad that you're here. We are back for Live Lessons. We have been gone for three long, long weeks, and uh, I'm glad that you all are here. Hey, just for fun, type in where you're from. If you're, in, if you're uh, logged into us on Ustream, go ahead and type in where you're from. You are watching uh, Gibson's Learner Master Guitar Live, Live Lessons. I'm Steve Krenz. Uh, we are here live in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. It's a hot and muggy day here in Nashville. But it's been uh, pretty lately. So look at all these people in here. Rapid City, South Dakota. Abilene, Texas. Uh, uh, Sanford, Florida. Carbera, Australia. Wonderful. Budapest, Hungary. Good to see you. Uh, Kingman, Arizona. Johnson City, New York. Rome, New York. Fort Davis, Texas. I've been there. Uh, San Antonio, my hometown. Um, very cool, very cool. All right, well, well to get us started, how this tonight's going to work is, is uh, we have a special guest with us, Greg Voros, who you will meet here in just a minute. Um, to get us started, I'm going to play something for us. We're also logged in on Ustream. You may be watching us on Facebook or something like that. You need to actually, if you want to be part of the giveaways and the chat, you need to be logged in at Ustream.tv. And our channel there is Gibson's Learn to Master Guitar. Or you can just type in Steve Krenz and you'll find us here as well. And that will log you in and that way you can be a part of the giveaways that we are doing and all that sort of stuff. So to get us started, let me go ahead and play one song for you. Um, uh, this is a song uh, called Carolina. I may have played it before, I'm not sure. I'm in the midst of filming a fingerstyle guitar course, so this is one of the songs that we'll be teaching uh, in the fingerstyle guitar course. So I hope you guys are having a good night. Let's go ahead and get started. acoustic finger style to get us started off tonight. So I hope you guys are doing well. Make sure that you are logged in to Ustream for us. Uh, I hope you guys are doing uh, well. It is very exciting to be back here with us. All right, but let's get started. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about guitar modifications and uh, adjusting your guitar uh, care and maintenance. Uh, if you want to know about changing some pickups out, if you want to know about adjusting your truss rod, if you want to know about any of that sort of thing, uh, we have our special guest with us. Greg, why don't you come on in? This is, this is Greg Voros. Um, hey, Steve. Very good friend of mine. We had lunch today. That's um, right. Uh, Greg is one of the head guitar techs at legendary Groon's Guitars here in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, Greg has been a friend to everything that we've been doing here for many years. So glad you're, very glad you're here. Well, thanks for having me, Steve. Um, and I made, I wrote in my notes the folks that Greg has fixed their guitars. Uh, how long have you been doing stuff at Guitar Repair? Wow, probably uh, over 10 years now, maybe maybe 12 years or so. Um, uh, I was looking through some of my notes, uh, and I wanted to specifically mention sure. <laughs> all sure. the folks that you have worked on. Greg has worked on guitars from Gary Rossington from Leonard Skinner, uh, Tommy Shaw from Styx, Elliot Easton from The Cars, Jewel, Everlast, uh, Roy Acuff, Chet Atkins, Les Paul, Brad Paisley, Steve Vai's guitar. Um, 
All of these instruments have passed over Greg's workbench at one time or other for various repairs or just uh, some sort of a maintenance. So um, it is it an honor to have to be great friends with him and honored to have you here. Thanks, uh, Dave. Tonight, Greg. Thanks. Um, we've got if you've got questions, go ahead and uh, type them on in as we go throughout the lesson. I already have some that we've had on our discussion board, so we'll have some of those to get started off with. But if you have a question. Um, type it in and we will try and get to it during the course of this next hour. So, um, first of all, where are you, if, for those of you who may not know um, Greg and be familiar with him, Greg's been on the show a couple of times, but it has been a while. It's been like six, seven months since Greg's been on. Um, where are you originally from? Originally, I'm actually from Hungary, and I actually saw there was somebody from Hungary watching right now, and I think that's great. <laughs> uh, so, I'm a, I'm a Hungarian New Yorker. That's been living in, uh, in, in Nashville for about eight years. Yeah. So you grew up in New York. I sure did. And then when did you start? Uh, I mean, you were telling me before we got started, you, you grew up taking lessons on guitar? I sure did. Uh, I, I took a, a lot of guitar lessons and in, in hopes to be a great guitar player. And I played in a few bands in New York, which was uh, fantastic. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And my guitars always needed work. Mm-hmm. And I paid a lot of money to have my guitars <laughs> serviced uh, on a regular basis. And um, eventually that really took over. M my passion really went into repairing guitars and kind of went away from really playing the instrument for a living. And this was when? Probably in late teens, early 20s? Um, late teens, Yeah, I would say. Late teens. And I actually just got into fixing guitars to fix my own guitars. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and I, 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 I started fixing... Uh, guitars uh, right away. A person named Sal Tyne actually got me started teaching me how to repair guitars. And, um, and this is still up in New York at this point. And this is still up in New York. And Sal is actually still repairing guitars and he's fantastic. He's mm -hmm. out on Oceanside. He's, uh, he's amazing. He's really, really very good. And uh, with me, I, as, as, as soon as I started repairing guitars, um, believe it or not, I was, re I was repairing instruments for paying customers my second or third day in. Mm -hmm. So Definitely ask your repairman how long they've been doing this before you just give it to them if they're uh, hanging out behind the counter, <laughs> for sure. Um, how long have you, uh, so what, what, how old were you when you moved to Nashville? 20, uh, mid-20s. 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 And then what brought you to Nashville or what, what made you decide that you wanted to be here? George Groon. <laughs> George Groon. If uh, Groon Guitars is a, is, is a downtown Nashville uh, landmark. Yep. And uh, if you have a chance to be a repairman with George Groon, that's the equivalent of being drafted by the NBA. Yeah. And uh, so I, me and my wife, we, we said, that's it. We're moving to Nashville. I'm going to get a job with George. And, um, and that's, it, it, luckily it worked out. Did you, now here's a, just a question I have personally. Did you have a job with George when you left New York? No. <laughs> no, I had big dreams. I had big dreams, and, 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 and my wife is super supportive. And, yes. and uh, we just said, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's time to leave New York. And, and we packed up, the, packed up the car, and we moved. Yep. And uh, it didn't work out right away for me mm -hmm. to, to work for George. He had a, he had a full staff. Mm -hmm. And then there was a door that opened, and I got super lucky. Yep. And um, he hired me as a repairman. And then th I, I think that's really when I started really learning how to repair instruments properly. Yeah. Even though I did it for a living for six years before that, yeah. um, I think just by the, the, the staff at Groon Guitars, them teaching me everything, mm -hmm. um, it's huge. Yeah. It's huge. And, and I owe a lot to them. And, um, and they know that. They're, they're, yeah. they're fantastic. The whole Groon Guitar staff is great. Um, so how long have you been at Groon's? Uh, a little over seven years now. Seven, seven years? Seven years. Yeah. Um, we came to know Greg uh, quite by accident, actually, with Learn a Master Guitar. We were doing our guitar conference, and, uh, here, our first guitar conference here in Nashville over the summer times, the Guitar Gathering. And um, we, uh, I, wanted to do, I wanted to have a workshop on just guitar setup, guitar repair, just basic things, guitar maintenance, how to, how to adjust your own guitar a little bit. And uh, I called uh, a friend of mine and said, well, you need to touch base with Groon's Guitars. So I called them and said, I'd like to talk to one of your repairmen. Or he had actually suggested a repairman to me, whose name I forget. And um, so I called him. I explained what we were uh, wanting to do. And he said, well, I don't know if I got really time, whatever. <laughs> and uh, so let me, let, me talk, let me let you talk to Greg. So 
and the rest is history. That's right. So <laughs> Greg has done, um, uh, we ended up, he, he did a fantastic job at our guitar conference. It was one of the best uh, sessions we had for the whole entire conference. And uh, Greg uh, then went on to just get to know us and, and we did a guitar maintenance course with him, a guitar setup course with him. He's been at every conference so far. That's right. And he's gone out with me when I do clinics in, in various places. And it's just a joy to uh, get to know. I'm honored to, to have such great friends that are doing such great work in the guitar world. And Groon's Guitars um, is one of the best places on the planet, uh, one of the top, if not the top, place on the planet for vintage instruments. Uh, just like you have a blue book for if you want to sell your used car, how much the value of uh, you know an in, uh, uh, your car is worth, you look at the blue book. In the vintage guitar world, there is a guide as well. That's the blue book for guitar guide, and it's the George Grun uh, uh, guide to vintage vintage instruments. Uh, right. George Grun and Walter Carter. Walter Carter, that. correct. And literally, these men, they hold up a guitar and they look at it and they go. Okay, that's $84,000. They literally wrote the book. They literally wrote the book. Yeah. And uh, so, and then they put that price on it, take it downstairs, and within a week or two, that, that guitar will be gone. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. It's amazing, the instruments that have passed through. So, you have done all kinds of work on just about everything that has strings on it. Yeah, I've been, I've been lucky. I've had, I, I've had some of the best instruments in the, in the, in the world come across my bench yeah. it's 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 a real honor um you know it's 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 awesome seeing i just recently finished uh working on a, on a, a 50s d'angelico uh -huh. it's amazing i've probably worked on uh 15 plus d'angelico since i since i worked since i started with george 15 to 20 i mean that's uh -huh. that's ridiculous that's yeah. unbelievable amount um i think most most repairmen in their entire careers might might see one yeah and not work on it, but just see it, yeah. you know? Yeah. So the opportunity that George Grun gave me to, to, you know, work on these instruments was huge. Let's get right into talking about some of the things that we're going to be discussing tonight. We had, um, so, uh, already we have lots of questions coming in. I'll try and get to some of them. Uh, Max Q, uh, you ask, how much money did you invest, Greg, on tools for guitar repair? Quite a bit, a, a lot thousands thousands of dollars but it's not like uh you know you you lay it out in one shot it's usually you you acquire the tools by learning how to do the jobs and then um once you learn how to do the jobs and you have those tools you wouldn't pick up uh you know uh, fret files and you know leveling tools if you didn't get into fret work just yet so as you're learning that's when you pick up the tools now keep in keep in mind here i'm i'm, I'm hesitant to to, to uh, just keep in mind as an average player I mean, he is doing work on the absolute high-end guitars, doing the most complex work that can be done on these instruments. He needs to have the tools to do this. An average guitar uh, uh, person playing uh, needs to have a few tools. What would, right. what would you say would be the basic uh, tools that uh, an average player should have? The number one tool that every uh, player, I think, should have is the proper truss rod adjustment tools for their instruments. And I'm, and I'm always surprised to, to find out that players don't have the right tool. Um, so for Gibsons, you, you need the right, uh, the right truss rod adjustment tool. For Martins, Fenders, Taylors, they all have a different one. And I think every player should really have it. That's number one. Yeah. Um, Most of the time, they'll come with your instrument if you buy right. a new instrument. If you dig in that little case, uh, generally in the pocket or something like that, there'll be a little hex wrench, uh, hex key, that will be the right size for your instrument. That is not, that, that is very specific to that instrument. That's an important piece of gear that you should have. Very much so. And a lot of music stores, they actually take out the truss rod adjustment tools from, from the case pockets of the instruments for a very specific reason. That's so that you bring them back for setups. Um, What's up, else they should have? Um, really, that's, that's the number one. I mean, with that, you can go ahead and, and, and work on your own instruments at home from the seasons changing and, and your guitar um, adjusting for that. You can you know, counteract that and really uh, adjust the neck, which is the part of the instrument that moves the most. So the truss rod adjustment tool is definitely number one. Obviously, if, you know, if it's the truss rod cover, like say on this Gibson is held down by two screws, then you need a little Phillips head screwdriver just to remove the truss rod cover. But really it's, uh, it's just that. 
Um, other than that, I think everyone should really have um, some sort of fretboard conditioner. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a must over, you know, even a polish or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just to condition your board um, is super important. Just lay it on there with, with a paper towel. I, I think that's very important For as well. For those of you who may not be familiar with that, this the top of this uh, fretboard, the top of the, this part of the board, um, is, is generally unfinished, and so you have, uh, it'll t have a tendency to dry out. And so it needs to be uh, um, oiled, hydrated, hydrated uh, through various means um, during the life of your instrument, especially right. if you're in a particularly dry setting. If you ever feel the, the, the frets of the instrument being a little sharp, that's, a, that's usually one of the first things that happens when your guitar is trying to tell you that it's, that it's too dry. Um, the, the wood actually shrinks just a hair. So every time you change your strings, it wouldn't be a bad idea to take some fretboard conditioner and just, uh, you know, really hydrate your fingerboard. And um, a paper towel will do, will do yeah. the trick just fine. Uh, I had a question. IMA Fingers says, Greg, what do you think about the quality of the Epiphone guitars, the electronics in them, as compared to uh, Gibsons? The electronics in Gibsons are quite a bit better. Yeah. Are quite a bit better. Um, the overall build of a Gibson is obviously a lot better too, but the price reflects it. P price reflects it. That's the you thing. Know. Can't say anything bad about no, Epiphone guitars. Not at all. It's it's a price point That's issue, right. and so uh, they are at the the lower end of the price point True. issue. But they make a fine instrument that is that that level of uh, of. Uh, 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 price so that goes along with it but i haven't heard of any like they're you know they're falling apart or anything like that no I've not at all as a matter of fact it, it's funny that uh we, we read that question about epiphones going back maybe uh 10 years ago there was a band in new york by the name of marauder and the guitar player from marauder toured the world with an epiphone uh junior yep. a, a 179 dollar instrument he toured the world mm -hmm. um and that'll that'll tell you that Epiphone's a pretty 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 well built instrument, even for under two hundred bucks. For for I'm all for great instruments. Don't get me wrong, but for years, I mean, up until the time several years to where I was playing professionally here in Nashville uh, and teaching and all that sort of stuff, I played on a, a Squire Strat that probably cost no more than two hundred bucks when we bought it in in uh, Texas, yeah. and I played that thing all the way up well into my career. So it has to do with. Um, more of what you play, not to diminish the quality of a, a great instrument, sure. but uh, it depends on what you can make out of it. Yeah. Um, uh, one more uh, question here, uh, Max Q. Boy, Max Q, you are full of questions. On the serviceability aspect, do you prefer the bolt-on necks or the set neck as a style of construction? For servicing, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, it, that, that has to do with style and what kind of sound you're looking for. On my end, servicing them, it really doesn't make a difference. Whether you, you can have a bolt-on neck that you adjust from the peg head um, when you adjust it at the top like a fender, or you can have a vintage fender where you actually have to take the neck off and adjust it. That takes a little bit more time, but um, serviceability, it's, it's really all the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let's go to a question on, from the discussion board, because I don't want to forget some of the ones that have come in on the discussion board. Um, uh, Nacogdoches Bob from Nacogdoches, Texas. Greg, when you were on before, you talked about a brand of strings that you use all the time due to their good sound sure. and their consistent quality. Uh, he's asking, were they Diodarios? Uh, what kind do you recommend as far as strings go sure. for electrics? We had a lot of string questions. Sure. Uh, I currently play with 10s, but a set of 9s came with my Les Paul Studio, and I'm interested in either one of them. Uh, if they're Diodarios, what set? If it's another brand, which set of those? Sure. There are millions to choose from, is what he says, and it sure. is, can get confusing. It can. You know, and, and with strings, I think the majority of the people that make strings today make a really fine product. Yeah. You can't really go wrong by going into a music store and picking something off the shelf. Um, you're going to get a, a pretty good string, and that really goes... Uh, the same with uh, polish or a polishing cloth. They're, they're all pretty good, you know. Um, there's some that I prefer, you know, and those are the ones that I wind up recommending. But uh, I like DR strings quite a bit. Um, they're super consistent. I, I, I play them. I use and abuse them. Um, they make a great string. For electric guitars, uh, tight fits is, is definitely the way to go. Uh, DR uh, makes them. For, for acoustic instruments, um, for vintage guitars, and I work on a ton of vintage guitars, um, DR makes, uh, makes a set of strings called Dragon Skins. 
And dragon skins are fantastic on a light built instrument uh, like a vintage guitar. They sound awesome at Gruen Guitars when we have um, uh, instruments, $100,000, $150,000 flat tops from, mm -hmm. from the late 30s. Um, we'll, we'll definitely put on a set of dragon skins and they just make them sound beautiful. Um, for a more modern built instrument, um, DR makes a rare uh, acoustic set or, or an 80-20. Um, but, but DR is definitely a, a great brand and I like them quite a bit. So um, there was actually another question that, that I read earlier about um, difference between uh, phosphor bronze and 8020s. Yes, somewhere, uh, somewhere. L. Black from Birmingham, Alabama asked about that and I, that's a common question too. For acoustics you'll see two different types generally, 8020s. Uh, which has to do with the mix versus phosphor bronze. Right. Tell us about that. F on, a, on a vintage instrument, on an older instrument, on a, on a guitar that's that's pretty well balanced, a set of phosphor bronze strings will sound fantastic on it. If you have a more modern instrument, like a modern Martin, um, where it's it's pretty it's pretty um, it's pretty deep. It's it's really really deep. You want to kind of tone that down just a hair, mm -hmm. and a set of eighty twenty sound really really good on them, especially what does the by the eighty twenty mean. I'm not sure. It, I know it has. I, I I thought it had to do something with the. It's the blend. It's the blend yeah. of the metals that are used right. in it. Um, so and also we had a question here. I forget where it was at. Um, talked about the core of of strings. The hex or the yeah, round. Yeah, there's the round core yeah. strings. There's hex, hexagonal core strings inside of a string. Right. Uh, you have your string, and then they're wound. These sure. these lower ones. Are wound, so this actually you have a a center, a core, and then you have a wound string around the top of it, and there's different. You they know, they different sound types different. You know what? What I recommend is 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 go out and and get a few sets of strings, yeah, and and install them on your guitar and play them. I, I mean, I can say that oh, you know I recommend these strings and I really like them and and so on and so forth. But really, go out and, and get a set. And, uh, and if you happen to buy a set of strings that I don't recommend, but you really like them, well, that's great for you. And I think you should keep buying that set if it really works for you. So um, that's, really, that's really what I have to say about, you know, strings, string choice and stuff like that. If you ever find yourself in Nashville and want to swing through Groon Guitars, come see me and I'll definitely give you a set of DR strings <laughs> so you can try it out. But, uh, but definitely, definitely give it a shot. I, I remember I played probably every single brand, every single set of strings, every single gauge made mm -hmm. when I, you know, when I was trying strings out and ultimately mm -hmm. I found one that I liked. Yeah. Um, nowadays I'm repairing and I, and I want consistency, yeah. you know, so. There, as far as, here's just some good rules of thumb when you're choo choo trying to choose strings for your instrument. And I agree. I mean, you go to the music store and there's like, uh, you know, there's 30 different things up there and, and you don't know what they all are. I don't know what they all are. Here's what you need to do is first you need, you need to answer a couple of questions. The gauge, if you, whatever you're playing, if you're playing acoustic, then you look for acoustic sets. If you're playing electrics, look at electric sets. But you want to find the gauge that is right for you. Right. Is it light? Is it medium? Is it extra lights? Things like that. Um, so buy, you know, buy a couple of different sets, okay? Just, if you want to find the perfect string set for you, just kind of mark it down. It's going to take about 10 to 15 sets of strings before you actually find, oh, okay, I like this one on that guitar. So sure. you're going to have to kind of, there's a little experimentation involved. You've got to first, first find the uh, gauge that works well for you. Um, second thing, then if you've, once you find the gauge, okay, I like lights. The heavies feel too, sure. too, too uh, stiff. Uh, extra lights, I'm wobbling around too much. Okay, let's say I like lights. Okay. Uh, then go to some of the manufacturers and pick out in their series that light and check those gauges to make sure you're getting the same kind of gauge uh, settings between them and see if you can find uh, uh, ones that per work particularly well on an instrument. You just have to compare them. And so you'll eventually kind of hone in on which ones you like. There's other uh, factors like coating, whether you want coating sure. on your strings which is coating is going to make them a little bit more slicker. Um, I prefer the coating, um, but other players do not. When I'm playing in some situations, I don't like the coating. So when I'm doing finger style, I generally kind of like the coating. Uh, it makes my fingers able to, to move around with less resistance. So anyway, that's some thoughts on strings there. Sure. Um, um, here's another question on strings. New Picker from South Carolina asks, uh, when changing strings, should you change one at a time to keep equal tension on the neck, or does it even really matter? 
it doesn't matter. The only time it really matters is when you're changing strings on a resonator, and that's so you don't uh, stand a chance of collapsing the cone. Mm -hmm. Then I would do them one at a time. But on, on any other instrument, it's okay to do take all of them off, go ahead and clean off your fingerboard, and hydrate the fingerboard, and uh, clean up your frets, and really clean up your instrument, and then restring it, and um, you know, like that. So okay. it's completely cool to do all of them at once. Cool. Um, let's catch another question or two. Um, uh, uh, love guitar. I'm going to get to your question in just a second. Alan Defar, let's get this talk. Get yours. Greg, did you build or buy your work rack that you use on the Strat in the video? Oh, the bench. I I, I built that. Uh, I I built that bench with with Paul Williams. Um, it's beautiful. It came out nice. That was a beautiful piece of wood. It came out nice. That was a piece of cherry, and I still I still have that. It's still one of my and main benches. And you do do some woodwork. I happen to have overheard. A little bit, a little yeah. bit. That's fun. That's that that's fun. That's what I try to do as a hobby yeah. when I'm not uh, repairing instruments. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, totally. So if anybody's gonna build a build a bench at at home, it's super easy to do. Cool. Um, and Al Defar says that bench is perfect. It is per it is perfect. Um, cool. Um, uh, Alex Bailey, you're asking, do you play? And yes, he plays. He plays very well. A little bit. Um, um, yeah, y'all are talking about commercials. Ustream should not be giving you commercials. Uh, we pay through the nose to make sure that <laughs> Ustream does not give you commercials. So if you're getting commercials, that's something we have to, uh, we will deal with, uh, with, uh, Ustream. So, um, cool. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with them. So I apologize for the commercials. Uh, we will fix out and fix that and see what's going on with that. Um, uh, Bernie, one, two, three, you were asking, how do we fix static on guitar and amps on the tuning knobs? That's a... I'm assuming you're, you're meaning like when you, when you, if you got an, uh, an, instru an older instrument or something like that, you'd, you'd use the tuning knob on an electric or something, you'd kind of hear, <laughs> kind of hear that little... Uh, if, if you hear static, it could be a dirty pot. A lot of times you're going to hear different, um, your, your pickups are going to react differently with different sources of light. So you'll notice that depending on what room in the house you're playing, it sounds a little bit different. You might get a little bit more feedback mm -hmm. than in other rooms. That's definitely the lighting. Depending on what pickups you have, if you have hum canceling or if you have single coil pickups, uh, the single coil pickups with the 60 cycle hum, it'll be a, quite a bit louder mm -hmm. than, the, than the humbuckers. Um, that is an instrument characteristic as far as single coil or humbucker if you have like a, a a pot that's dirty you can clean out that pot so it doesn't crackle how would you how would a person do that contact cleaner you would take off the back plate and literally take the nozzle and 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 insert it into the pot and blow into it and go ahead and and and, and, turn, and wiggle around, yeah twist there. around the pot and, and get it in there and that'll take all the dirt out of there for sure yep. using a electrical contact cleaner mm -hmm. you can pick that up at uh, uh kind of home depot or something like that uh make sure you get the right stuff don't just squirt anything in there that's right uh, wd-40 or whatever else you find right. in there squirt squirt contact cleaner contact that's the cleaner. stuff that's going to clean that clean the, the specific uh, chemicals that are on there right um sl gorin um, you were asking, do you recommend locking tuners to install strings for ease? I would recommend locking tuners so that your instrument hardly ever goes out of tune. Um, yeah, it's not really for ease. It's, it's yeah. more for just consistency. A locking tuner, for those of you who don't know, I've got locking tuners on this, uh, on my Valley Arts back here. Um, locking tuners, I doubt you'll be able to see this, but there's a little knob on the back here that actually, you put the string through the hole. That's right and then you tighten this knob and it grabs that string. It grabs that string and won't let it go. So instead of having to wind it around here four or five times and make sure it's over the, uh, the, the, uh, another piece of wire so that it locks on itself, stuff like that, a locking tuner just kind of saves some time sure. with that. Locking tuners are fantastic and, and they're awesome, but uh, you know they, they make a lot of tuners out there that are not locking tuners that really work yeah. really well. It's not a, a necessity. You know, for a professional like Steve, right. you're playing around all the time, and and you know, um, it's, I'm sure it's kind of a nuisance to even. Well, I I like the locking tuners, sure. but I've done it. I mean, some of my guitars have them, some of them don't. Sure. So you can definitely get by without them. When you're trying to install a string on a guitar that does not have a locking tuner, here's just a a little. Uh, you 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 thread the string through there, 
And then as you turn, as you're turning it around on the tuning post, you want to make sure, Greg, you can trump me anywhere in here. Make, you just want to make sure that that string covers uh, that other layer of string in there so that you're actually locking as it tightens. You don't want to just put it in there and then just keep winding down right. uh, because then your string sort of starts slipping and you're going to have tuning issues. Right. The, the, the whole point of the locking tuner is to try and minimize your wraps. You yeah. want to pull the string through all the way and then as you start tightening the tuner, there's a, there's a, a ball bearing that will actually hold the, the string into place, lock it, and then you can continue to tune it and, and in, in hopes that you won't have any wraps because the wraps is what, what slips so that it pulls you out of tune. On a guitar that doesn't have uh, locking tuners, how many winds should you have on a tuning? Um, does it even matter? Uh, yeah, sure it does. If The more you have, the more likely that you're, you're going to go out of tune. So on the E, A, and the D, I shoot for between three and four. Mm -hmm. Three, four, really no more than that. And the G, B, and the E, uh, maybe a wrap or two more than that. Now, if it's a Strat, um, and it doesn't have a string tree at the G string. I like to put a little more wraps on it so it, it pulls uh, the brake angle from the nut. It goes as far down the post as possible on the G string, um, on on something like that. Yeah, especially with a, sense. especially with a, with a fender, the post is going to be a little taller. So you want to make sure that the brake angle from the nut to the tuner, you're you're as as low as possible. So the G, the B, and the E on on a Strat, especially, I'd put a little bit more, but no more than say seven, six or seven, no more than that. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, uh, Bernie, let me just mention something. It, when you're talking about the static on guitar and amps, when you have any sort of noise in your system, you need to, first of all, the biggest job you have is to isolate where is that coming from. And it could be coming from anything. It could be coming from the knobs. This, these knobs could be making noise. It could be the electronics within your instrument. It could be uh, not well shielded or something like that. It could be you're on a single coil instrument and you've got big fluorescent lights like we do here uh, uh, that, are, that are aiming at it or you're, you're playing and you've got frequencies around you or something like that. That's going to cause a 60 cycle hum to be in everything that you do. And you turn your guitar and it goes away and yep. you go, yep. all that sort of stuff. Okay, then you're dealing with a 60 cycle hum. Right. That's an electronic issue. You need to, you know, some of that is just comes inherent with right. any sort of single coil pickup, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something you have to kind of work with. Nowadays they have, um, like, say on that telly, nowadays they have uh, guys uh, like Lindy Fralin who, who are making somewhat uh, systems that are almost noiseless, almost noiseless. You can't get all of the noise out. Um, but just to battle that, this instrument, um, I actually... Uh, just finished up for uh, for Michael Amoruso. This is Eagle 2X. Eagle 2X, I don't know, Amoruso Law. There you are right here. <laughs> uh, Amoruso Law. First of all, happy birthday. Happy I just birthday. happen to know that it is your birthday. And uh, uh, <laughs> Greg just happened to have the instrument that you had sent him. So he was getting ready to send it back. He let me play it. It plays like a dream. Man, so it plays great. It's a great sounding instrument. Um, so... Happy birthday, Mike. Happy birthday, Mike. And uh, for, for Mike, he, he, he really didn't like that 60 cycle hum. So he, he went with a, a Lindy Freeland system where there's actually wiring inside the pick guard. Um, and, it's, and it's pretty complicated, but nevertheless, 85% of the noise is actually taken out mm -hmm. um, as opposed to a regular instrument, you know. Um, and and it and they're great. They sound fantastic. It's if we're on a telly. This this setup is fantastic. It's nice and plunky, like you want a, a telly to be. Um, great guitar. Yep. So, for Michael, sure. this is just for you. We're gonna see if this. See if we can get some sounds out of your. Good spanky kind of a Telecaster sound. So it's great, great sounding guitar. Very cool uh, guitar, very quiet. It's it's nice guitar. I, I, I like it quite a bit, and I like the pickups. Pickups are also awesome. Pickups sound great. These are the Lindy Fralins. Lindy Fralins. Lindy Fralin great. custom pickups. Love Lindy Fralin pickups. Very cool. Um, I've got Lindy Freeland pickups in one of my strats and absolutely love it. So this is just a priceless instrument and, uh, oh gosh, <laughs> no, I'm just, ah, just kidding, Mike. Um, so it was great, great playing it. 
Um, all right, let's give away some stuff. Let's take a little bit of a break here. Um, and I want to, uh, we're going to give away some stuff. We, um, Greg had turned me on to uh, some guitar polish and fretboard conditioner by Professor Greens that Greg recommends and actually even has a relationship with the company now. Um, instrument, this is their instrument polish. Want to mm -hmm. talk about that? Sure. Um, Professor Greens is awesome. I've been using him for a, a long time. And uh, the reason I like them uh, a lot is because they're all natural. Um, it's the, the, kind of the hippie in me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really like natural products. I think they're they're great. Um, one of the reasons I like their polish a lot is when I work on vintage instruments, the last thing you want to do is um, is alter the sheen or the patina of, of the finish itself. Um, you don't want to uh, take a, a polish full of um, petroleum distillates and really make that finish uh, shiny. It's really not supposed to be like that. What you want is a clean instrument free of debris. Yeah. Um, and that's really what you want. And this is a, a super light duty cleaner. It's water based. It'll take what you want off and it's not going to mess with the sheen. Love the polish. It's great. The, uh, the fretboard conditioner I'm convinced is the best fretboard conditioner on the market today. It's, it, it's, it's awesome. It's a lemongrass oil and it, uh, absorbs really nicely into, into, into the porous wood like rosewood or, yeah. or, um, ebony. I, I think it's fantastic. Um, and I really recommend both. We're giving these away, right? We're going to give cool. two of these away. All right, somebody is going to win this. The winners of the Professor Green's fretboard conditioner and the instrument polish are Joe Arrow. Cool. Joe Arrow, you have just won this. Let me tell you how this is going to work, Joe. You need to right now, don't even pause to celebrate. Send us an email at service at legacylearningsystems.com. Maybe uh, someone can put that link up there. Thank you, Fabian, our wonderful moderator. Um, you can put that up, and we will send this to you. You need to send us your, e your, you know, your email address, your physical address, so we could mail them to you, and uh, phone numbers, things like that. So Joe Arrow, you have just won this. I will try and announce these again at the end of the program, just in case you're, I don't know, getting a sandwich or going to the bathroom or something right now. We've had so many people miss their time that they've won. Joe Arrow, you just won some great polished, great fretboard conditioner. Um, if you want to know what's on the benches of most of the guitar techs uh, at the fourth floor of Grun's Guitars, working on these $100,000 instruments, it's this stuff right there. All right, cool. Uh, what do I have next? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to play a song. Cool. So uh, what can I play? Let's play something on the electric. I was going through some old... Some of my old lessons um, from when I was taking lessons way back when and uh, came across some just great songs that I was learning way back when and uh, so I'll just try and kind of remember something. I didn't want to have to think too much and prepare for tonight so I'm just going to uh, come up with an old standard. This is an old standard jazz standard called Misty. Um, I'm going to do it in the key of E flat. Um, if I can remember how it goes. Uh.
Something like that. Something like that. Um, a little bit of misty for you. Um, hey, we're going to take a break just for a second and run a little bit of a promo. Um, please be patient with us. Give us about 30 seconds, and we've got to switch some things around, and we'll be right back with you. Introducing the Learn and Master Spotlight Series. This affordable line of specialized courses is designed to address specific areas of interest. Each of these focus programs contain three to eight DVDs of instruction, a downloadable workbook, and access to our online support community. And each provides a more in-depth study of specific subjects. With the same multiple modes of learning and high quality production as the comprehensive Learn and Master courses, the Spotlight Series delivers great instruction at an affordable price. Take your dream to the next level with the Learn and Master Spotlight Series. All right, sorry about all the, the uh, y'all have had to deal with Ustream commercials now, which we'll get to the bottom of. Um, hey, just want to tell you some of the resources since we haven't had a live lesson all month long. Um, our newsletter has come out, and we also had our resources sale, but I haven't been able to tell anybody because we haven't had anybody, uh, we haven't had live lessons. So let me just tell you quickly about what resources we have on our sale for this month. Um, first one of them is, it was one of the Beatles' birthday this month. I want to say Ringo, but I may be wrong. Um, so we kind of, I kind of declared it Beatles month. Um, so we offer two Beatles resources. First of them is the Beatles Complete chord songbook. Um, this is um, this is a great little, if you already know the tune and you just kind of want to know what the chord changes are to it, this is great. It has almost 200 uh, Beatles songs, almost every one of them that you would want to know is in here. It's got uh, the chord blocks for the top of it and it's in the original keys. It's just kind of the, the song with the chords on top so it's not going to teach you like a specific arrangement of it, but if you just want to know the chords to yesterday uh, or Whatever. That's cool. I'm going to look at all different ones of them here. Uh, Michelle, here's the chords that I used for that. Anyway, this is a great resource. Uh, sec part of that resource package with the Beatles thing is this book I picked out, Fingerstyle Arrangements of Beatles Tunes. Uh, there are 30 of the most popular Beatles songs in here. Nowhere Man, I'm sitting here flipping through. Um, please Please Me, Ticket to Ride, We Can Work It Out. Um, all these great songs. There's fingerstyle arrangements of it. This is a great book. It comes with a standard notation as well as the uh, uh, tab in it as well. You get these two books as well as our, our Guitar Apprentice, which is kind of a computer uh, guitar learning game, as well as a download of a guitar of a uh, Beatles lesson. Um, all that for 39 bucks. So this is a great deal, that fingerstyle uh, or the, the Beatles package. The other package that we have is a guitar maintenance thing, which has Greg's guitar course. Um, it's a great guitar course. Uh, if you want to learn how to work on your own instrument, set it up, uh, adjust some things on it. The maintenance that you as a player should know how to do on your instrument. Absolutely. Um, this, is, this is a great, fantastic course with it. Um, and you get Professor Green's and this, uh, and that's part of the um, guitar maintenance pack. So the link for that uh, is, thank you Fabian for just putting the link up um, for the sales. So, and that's our July specials, so for this month. So take sure. advantage of all that sort of stuff. You can also get a bundle of all of that stuff, and I think it's just 94 bucks. So it's a great thing. If you want to look at the uh, specials, underneath the Ustream window, there is a blue button. I believe it's the first one, the first blue button right underneath the Ustream window. That will take you to those specials, and you'll get to, get to know about all those specials. We want to give away one thing. We're going to give away this Beatles Complete Songbook. 
Okay? We are giving away all kinds of things tonight. Someone is going to win this. You ready? The winner of this Beatles, 194 Beatles songs. You ready? The winner of this is Dressel. Nice. D-R-E-S-S-L-E. -S -S -E. Dressel. You have just won this, but you haven't won it until you email me at service at LegacyLearningSystems.com. Give me your mailing address, phone number, all that sort of stuff, and we will get this out to you. Uh, and if you don't claim it, hey, you snooze, you lose. We'll give it away to somebody else. Um, but Dressel, you have just won that. Um, let's answer. Um, There's a couple of. <clears throat> let's answer a couple of questions up here. But we also want to talk about. Uh, before we answer questions, let's talk about some of the modifications, things that sure. that average players are sure. going to be doing. What about like if they wanted to uh, change out a pickup or something like that? That's really really common. Um, Replacing a pickup in, in an instrument is, is a great way to make your instrument sound a lot better very quickly. Um, I just want to make sure that before um, you go ahead and, and, and say, you know, my pickup is just a little too weak, I want something a little bit hotter, a little bit more loud, um, make sure that th the pickup that you have in your instrument right now is set at the proper height. Yes. If, the, if the pickup is not set at the proper height, then your volume can drop big time. Explain and what that is. So the, the, there's a proper measurement, which I, w I go through in, in the video, that the pickup should be at a certain height from the string. And uh, different pickups have a different height that they should be away from the string so that they're uh, at, 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 their, at its loudest and, 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 and sound the best. Think of it like a microphone and you're speaking into a microphone. Okay? Um, you can, if your pickup is too far away, then the mic is too far away, right. and you're not going to get a very big signal. But by the same token, then you think in your head, oh, well, I'll crank that sucker up till it's right on the thing. Well, you don't necessarily want that. You don't want that either right. because you get this, you get kind of a funky sound there. Right. So you want it high, but not too much because then that starts really affecting your tone. It'll pull your strings, all right. kinds of crazy things. There's a very happen. specific height. So for there's forum. a specific now, height. You don't have to guess. It, they explain it in the video, but there is. A, so first, that's the first thing. I didn't even know about pickup height for years. And I would, you know, one pickup was just softer than the others. And I just thought, well, that's how it is. Well, you adjust these little screws right here, and you can bring that up to a proper height. That's right. Now, if, if after that you adjust them to the proper height and you say to yourself, these pickups are just not hot enough for the music I'm looking to play, then, it, then it's a good idea to replace those pickups. And you'll get um, huge results very, very fast. And replacing pickups is super easy. Um, you know, people overcomplicate it all the time, and it's, and it's super expensive if you take it in for a repairman to do it, and it's really easy to do yourself. Um, a pickup, most of the pickups usually have two wires coming out of it. That's a hot in the ground. If you have a soldering iron and you take the ground and you put it to the, to the top of the pot, and, um, you know a little and, bit and about electronics and can work a soldering gun. Uh, yeah, soldering iron. And really, you just need to take it, take the pickup leads out that you're taking out, and make sure you put the new ones back where the old ones went. And uh, it's super easy, super quick, and, and I think everyone out there can can really do it. Um, that's not one of the things that I would recommend to to take it to somebody necessarily. Um, you know, a clean solder job would be would be nice, but. Um, that's something that you guys could really experiment with now. If you're, if you're wanting to take a, just an average instrument and really kick it up a notch, here's a little secret for you. The only thing that really makes sound is the strings and the pickup. That's right. <laughs> and this handful of electronics. So it doesn't really matter how about the, the intricate gold inlay that's that right. has nothing to do with the sound. It that's just right. makes you feel better about it. If, um, you, if, 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 if you have interest in, a, in an instrument and, and you pull the trigger on an Epiphone, say Junior, Mm -hmm. Under 200 bucks, mm -hmm. right? 179, yep. 180 bucks, yep. or something like that. Um, you could take that instrument and take 55 bucks and invest in a Seymour Duncan um, JB or a 59 humbucker and, and, and put it in the bridge, and that will be one, one screaming guitar. That'll be fantastic. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's a great way to soup up that guitar, and you could really have everything done for about 250 bucks. You can't beat that. What about adjusting a tremolo bar? I don't really mm -hmm. have a, you know, on a Strat, you would have a whammy bar, mm -hmm. and there, if you turn that over in the back, there's a back plate, and there are actually springs that control the tension of that. Um, there's a claw 
that that that's in the back and there's uh, springs that hook into the claw and that's what pulls against your your tremolo and on the other end the strings pull to counteract that tension now some people like a functional tremolo and some people like it to be locked completely against the body mm -hmm. if you have the tremolo a functional tremolo unlike a stratocaster that's completely locked into the body it's better for sustain mm -hmm. um and and you definitely get a certain sound out of it now if a person's going to want to use the tremolo um y there's a specific height that you want it off the body and that's right around the 30 second and then with that you can easily dump down and even pull a little bit up on the tremolo and that's how you make a perfectly functional one yeah you want to you want to make sure that you have the right if your if your tremolo is too hard to push down mm -hmm. you just adjust you you can adjust it you can take one of the springs out you can bounce it around if it's too loose that gets problems too, man. I can never get my guitar in tune. Right. I play a chord and it goes out of tune, or I bend a note and it goes out of tune. I took some time on the video just to go over that to have a, a when, when I when I covered the, the, the Stratocaster guitar in the setup, I made sure that I set up the instrument two ways with a functional tremolo mm -hmm. and with a non-functional tremolo. Um, so that's a you know that that that's really good to get into and really have an idea of what you want out of your instrument if it's if it's a Strat before you get in and do the setup. Yeah, yeah. We have so many questions. What kind of a repair, Thomas335 asks, what kind of a repair would have to be done on a 1976 Martin D3 when the intonation is off? That's, uh, that, there's a lot going on there, especially from, you know, especially because of the fact that it's from the 70s. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have an acoustic flat top instrument that's uh, over 25, 30 years old, you, you're, you're right at that point where that instrument is going to need a lot of work, right around $1,000 worth of work um, to be a functional playable instrument. Um, from the years of, of, of string tension pulling on the neck and the block, what you're going to wind up having is your action is going to be super tall and there's going to be nowhere, no way to lower it. Uh -huh. And at that point, that's where you get into a neck reset. And in a neck reset, you take out the neck of, a, of an acoustic uh, flat top and um, you put it back at a, at a slightly different angle. Um, and then that'll let you... Uh, play with the uh, with the action itself so the question that you asked uh, that your intonation is off there's a there's a lot going on there i don't think i can easily answer that question uh, it's a lot of different factors that yeah go there's into a that. lot of different factors uh, that go into length, it something could have adjusted yeah. along the way the neck could be out of that's whack. It. um, um you know uh, a, a, a big culprit in in intonation which a lot of people don't realize is fretware yeah um Anytime you have fretware from playing uh, playing on the fingerboard for however long you've been playing, um, you wind up putting grooves inside the frets. And when you put these grooves inside the frets, the strings actually um, lay in these grooves. And when the string lays in the groove, that intended note is is sharp or flat, more sharp or flat than it than than, than that intended note should be. Um, so fretwork is definitely uh, needed. Uh, to remedy fret, uh, fret wear, and that'll definitely impact your intonation. And this is something that can be done. You don't necessarily want to try, you know, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good with a screwdriver. No, no, no. Right. That's uh, one of the repairs that I, you know, there's repairs that I recommend you do yourself, like a setup, and I think everyone should should really tinker with their own instruments and, and really set up their instruments themselves. Putting in a, a pickup, that's cool, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if you're handy with the soldering iron, that that's great. Getting into fret work, you can do a lot of damage very, very quickly. You don't know what you're doing. Very, very quickly. That's something that I would recommend paying, paying to have done. If you don't have a good, let me just mention this while it's kind of on, on my mind. If you don't have a good uh, guitar tech in your area that you trust, uh, or a good luthier that, that, that you could take your instrument to and feel great about, uh, let me also mention something. We, ha we have a, a thing called Legacy uh, Guitar Services, um, which you can... Uh, get in contact with us, and we can actually have Greg work on your instrument. Um, a lot of, several of our folks have taken advantage of that. Michael Amoroso, we're working on his guitar right now. Um, several guys have sent in their instruments with significant issues that need to happen, and Greg will work on that instrument personally, and will set it up, ship it back to you. And so that we have a little system called Legacy Guitar Services for that. I'm sorry, I, uh, the link. Uh, uh, Maybe someone can find the link and put that up. If not, you can just contact our office, and we can get you in contact with that. So if you have 
you know, your dad's guitar sure. that's been sitting underneath the bed and, and it's a really great and you want to get it back in playable condition, but you're scared to, to just take it down to the guy at the music store. Um, you can ship it here to Greg and Greg will work on it, He'll give you a price and work it out. And uh, it, it's great. Yeah. I, you know, I, I recommend that at one time or another, 10 plus years ago, I was that guy at the music store yep. that had very little experience. Um, but nevertheless, you know, it's trial by fire. So you, yeah. you, you, you get in there and you try and get it done. Unfortunately, there's no standard for, th for, this, uh, for this business. For the field that I'm in, there's no standard for it. So a lot of people um, really, uh, every music store has a guitar repairman. Uh -huh. every, every one of them does. And um, you really just don't know what their experience is and, and, and what they're able to do to your instrument. And a lot of times I get to see uh, a lot of times I'm not the first one that repairs the instruments. I'm usually number two or three. And when it's number one, then you could do the repair and it'll come out fantastic and the guitar will cooperate. Uh -huh. It's when you have to clean up somebody else's work. That, that's when it gets a little bit more pricey and that's when I have the hardest time working on instruments from previous repairmen. I had a question. Uh, one of the guys had asked, what is the best way if they want to ship an instrument to you? What's the best way to do that? Uh, legacy, uh, legacy services. You could... Uh, I take mean, part of that. And um, how do they, uh, UPS? UPS, FedEx, uh, p post office, get a, get a box, um, just ship it over to me. The one thing to keep in mind is make sure that when the instrument is inside the case, the instrument doesn't move inside the case. And then when Ship you, the case and everything. Ship the guitar that's right. in the case. That's right. Make put sure the case in sort of a box. Sometimes I'll use a clothing box yep. or something like that that you can get. Um, that is meant to ship clothes and stuff like that, and you just put the whole case down in this box, and then you stuff it full of paper, That's or you it. stuff it full of peanuts or something like that. Take it down to the to the you box it place or whatever, and they'll 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 get you all fixed up with that. Slack the strings, detune the strings, detune the strings, and um, really make sure that when the guitar is in the in the in the hard shell case or a gig bag, just make sure it doesn't move inside that case and that the case with the guitar doesn't move inside the box that you're shipping it in. Yeah. And then um, then it should be safe to transport for sure. Releasing the tension on the strings is a good thing to do anytime you're shipping your instrument, even when you're putting it on a plane. I just was at a conference this past week and I lowered my action on, on or detuned my mm -hmm. strings, lowered this pressure because it's, it's getting hot, it's getting cold. And, and it's getting bumped around, you don't want that full tension. It's just a little bit safer That's right. to do it that way. All right, we are in the closing home stretches of things. I know we haven't gotten to um, everybody's question here, but um, we'll try and do the best we can. Um, let me give away one more thing. I want to give away one of these finger-picking Beatles books, uh, 30 finger-style arrangements of Beatles songs. Someone is about to win this. Uh, I am Christine. I am Christine. You have just won finger style guitar, uh, finger picking Beatles, various arrangements in here in a variety of skill levels. Great book, tab and the music. I am Christine, send us your uh, mailing address and we will get that out to you. Um, we've already talked about legacy guitar services. Hey, here's one thing. If ever you're in Nashville, okay, um, I'm here. Greg's here. I'm here. Um, Greg's down at Gruen's Guitars. Contact us. If you're sure. here for a conference, you're just driving through on vacation or something, I would be honored to meet you. Uh, we've had several of our students. Uh, Tom Maddox, I think, was by, by here not a week or two ago for the Chet Atkins convention. He could let us know we were in town. We had a great uh, lunch together, and That's then he right. went over with Greg and saw the ins and outs of Gruen's guitars that, that uh, the regular people don't see. So there's a... There's a all kinds of things at Gruen's Guitars that we can show you. Anyway, if you happen to be in town, Absolutely. don't hesitate to call us up at Legacy, and we, we would love to meet you. I'd love to meet you and, um, you know, get to know you a bit. So Absolutely. there you go. Um, all right. We're going to give away one more thing, two more things. Man, spending all my time giving things away. We're going to give away some DR strings. This is part of their uh, Dragon Skin. We've already talked a little bit about these, a uh, pair of... Uh, Acoustic strings, as well as a pair of electric strings, the uh, Phosphor Bronze, and looks like a set of lights. Tight fits. Yep. Tight fits. Tight fits. Tight um, fits. The winner of these strings is, ready, Rita Carr. Rita Carr, you have just won these. Send us your information, and we will uh, get these out to you. You know what we should do, Steve? We should send something over to uh, my friend in Hungary. Something. Um, if we have our, our is our Hungary... Hungry, is hungry, our hungry man? Uh, <laughs> is our hungry? <laughs> Le Leonard, I believe, 
is uh, his name. I, we, I think he's won something, something in the past. Is that right? It was a long, long time ago. Um, if you can send us something, Leonard, we'll send you some strings or something. Sure. So there you go. Cool. Um, let me give some closing announcements, and then I'm going to play us out. Um, I have been busy for the last month, really, uh, working on the um, acoustic uh, fingerstyle guitar course. And um, we have, uh, it's a new course I've been working on. We've been planning it for literally about two and a half years and are just now able to get it in the pipeline to where I'm actually filming it. I've, been, I've filmed about three-fourths of it so far, and I've got two more sessions we're going to do, and it's turning out great. I'm just really pleased with how it's turning out. I think educationally, I feel I'm doing a good job of explaining things at a good pace. So if you're interested in learning fingerstyle guitar, stay tuned, because um, as soon as we get this thing edited and get it off manufactured, um, we'll have it available. So um, the fingerstyle guitar course is going well. Um, we have... Um, one more thing I want to give away. This is crazy. We're just giving away too many things. Um, grab me that guitar. We're giving away an Epiphone guitar. Our good folks at Epiphone um, have given us this guitar. This is an Epiphone guitar pack. Uh, someone is going to win this guitar, and there's an amp that goes along with it, and a strap, and a, a, a case, and all sorts of stuff. This is part of their Epiphone uh, player pack series. And the winner of this is Turn Left 27. Turn left 27, contact us, and we will send you out this uh, great guitar. F a lot of folks don't realize Epiphone and Gibson are so connected right now. There was a time, actually not all that long ago, when Epiphone was a completely separate company, right. and Gibson was its own company as well. Now they've kind of agreed to, to work together on a few things. Um, but Epiphone makes wonderful instruments that are uh, affordable and work well. So this is a great guitar, and turn left 27. You have won this Rita car. You have won some uh, the strings. Let me see if I can remember this. I am Christine. You won the finger picking Beatles book. Dressel, you won the other Beatles songbook. And Joe Arrow, you won the uh, Professor Green stuff. Trade you. I don't know. I'll get that back. Get that guitar back from you. All right. A couple of last minute announcements. Our July newsletter came out. Um, um, so if you are not on our newsletter list, perhaps Fabian, you can put up to the, put up our uh, newsletter archive, and uh, you can, uh, uh, Fabian, maybe you can put up our newsletter archive and our July newsletter link. That would be great. Um, we have in that newsletter, I do a video tip on blues double stops, some blues playing stuff, and as well as we have our uh, student of the month, which is Karen B. Safira. I don't know if you're here with us tonight, Safira, but congratulations on being the Learner Master Guitar Student of the Month. I'm sure the paparazzi has just been crazy <laughs> all, over your, all over your house. Um, I also did an article about choosing the right live guitar instructor in your area. I know many of you are going through our Learner Master Guitar course, um, which that's great. Sometimes it's good, though. I, I don't want to diminish the fact of getting together one-on-one -on -one with a live instructor, and I give you some real good, clear tips on how to choose, find the right guy. Greg and I were just talking even before we started. It is important that you find the right guy Absolutely. to be your instructor. I am thankful when I was a kid and didn't know anything, I had the right guy, and he taught me how to play. Um, so I give you some real good tips of finding that guy, the right guy, uh, to be able to help you out. Um, our next live lesson is going to be next week, July 31st. We're going to have an open talk. We're also, I'm also going to teach you the song Come Together by the Beatles, and we're going to be talking about working with a tremolo uh, whammy bar. Um, and the next big live lesson after that is August 7th um, with, wow, Gordon Kennedy. That's pretty cool. Gordon Kennedy, one of the top studio guitarists here in Nashville, as well as songwriter, songwriters. Remember that song, Eric Clapton's song? Oh, I don't know how many Grammys he won off of that one, of Change, Change Your World, mm -hmm. Change the World. You know who wrote that song? Gordon Kennedy. He's going to be with us on August 7th. Here's another little trivia. His dad, Jerry Kennedy played, just was a studio guitarist here in Nashville. Uh, the guitar that's going on Roy Orbison's Pretty Woman. Okay, the fellow that was playing that guitar was Jerry Kennedy, right. Gordon Kennedy's dad. And uh, Gordon has that guitar. I'm going to try and convince him to bring 
the actual guitar that Pretty Woman was recorded on. So that's wow. going to be really cool. And we'll give it away to... Nah, we're not going to give it away. <laughs> um, but uh, that'll be fun. So we're having Gordon Kennedy. This is great. I've been trying to get him for months. So this will be great to have Gordon Kennedy be a part of it. Um, on Gibson Skills House, we do a lot of lessons over there. The, the, the middle button on underneath Ustream goes to our Gibson Skills House lessons. Um, I have a, less, a new lesson over there uh, talking about uh, jazz chord, the ultimate jazz chord that everybody needs to know if you're playing jazz. We also have a couple of songs uh, that some of the other instructors have put up. Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult and Secrets by One, Repu Re One Republic. So a couple of great songs. If you want to learn those, those are over at Gibson Skills House. You can just hit that middle button underneath the Ustream window, and that will get you right over there. Um, also, if, you're, if you enjoy our lessons over at Gibson Skills House, Gibson has added a, it's a little button that says Leave Feedback. They are really paying attention to that. So if you can, if you like what we do, then press Leave Feedback and take about 20 seconds and fill out, I think it's like three or four or five questions, and, uh, and let us know how you're doing. That helps Gibson to, to uh, know what we're doing over there. Also, if you like our live lessons, you can like us on Facebook. We have our Facebook page. Fabian, maybe you can put that up. As well as you can rate the videos for our past live lessons in Ustream, and that helps us to uh, rank a little bit better on Ustream. So I hope you guys are having a great night. Um, I want to finish off with a um, song. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Let's do something in drop D. Let me just say that if yep. uh, we didn't get to a lot of the questions, if, if you, you folks want to go ahead and uh, bring the, the questions to the student support forum on Ask Greg, I will get around to, to answering the questions. I promise I take. Uh, Sometimes I take a little bit long to, to, to go ahead and answer the questions, but I promise I'll get to them and I'll give you the answers that, um, I'll give you the right answers to your questions, okay? Yeah. On our discussion board, uh, which we've got our new discussion board, and now we've got our blogs back working again and our chat back working again. So I'm thankful to have those things, those functions back working again. Uh, maybe even after uh, 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 one of these live lessons in the future, we can have a, a chat and we'll. We'll set up a chat or something afterwards. Anyway, so but there's a section on there for Ask Greg in the guitar setup uh, part of the discussion board, and Greg answers all those questions. So if you have a specific question, you can ask it to Greg there. If you want to have Greg work on your instrument, contact us at Legacy Learning Systems, <coughs> excuse me, and we can uh, get you fixed up with that. All right, let me close this out with a song. Um, when I was first here in Nashville, I was doing a lot of jingle work. Uh, and uh, composing for a company down on Music Row, that kind of advertising and things like that. One of the things that was a project that I was working on was a little promo for Habitat for Humanity, the great charity Habitat for Humanity. So I had pitched them this song. They ended up actually going a completely other direction with the whole ad campaign, so this song never actually got used. But uh, I always thought it was a cool song, so uh, I had kept it. So anyway, this is a little song, Habitat for, I call it the Habitat for Humanity promo. Um, and this is another one of the songs that I teach in the fingerstyle guitar course. So uh, I'm in drop D tuning, so that means everything is the same except for the last strings down uh, a uh, whole step down to a D. It's a very rich sound. All right, so here we go.
Um, thank you very much, Greg, for being part of tonight. Thanks for having me, Steve. <clears throat> Glad you're here. Thank you all for being part of tonight. Keep up the great work on your own learning. Uh, being a musician is a wonderful thing. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you next week for live lessons. Have a great week. You guys take care.